In this clip, I will share with you all of the tricks and tips that I used to create this image in soft pastel of this reference image of a flower. If you would like to use this image, you will find a link to this reference image in the description below. I will also share with you all of the resources that I use. So let's talk about the resources. So firstly, I used a selection of paint brushes and I also use nail brushes that aren't pictured in this image, but you will find in the description below. I also used a box of Koh-i-Noor soft pastels. These are available in a selection of sizes, but I used a large box, so you will see all of the colours I used. You will also see a different variety of pastels, but I have collected pastels over the years, and the ones that I found were really cheap ones, but it's just that they're slightly different colours. I also use a brand of paper called Mitante, Canson Mitante pastel paper. And the reason that I use this paper is also because of the texture, but I also like this paper because of the variety of colours and the scale of the paper. I like working on large scale paper. And as I say, I do like the um, colours and tones of the paper. So I went for a really dark tone here. One more thing to mention is that I did use three or four pastel pencils um, to help with little details. You don't need these, but I just find it helpful if you've got a detailed area. Um, and one other thing that I used um, is alcohol. Now, you can buy artist alcohol, but I have been experimenting with hand sanitizer. The reason I started experimenting with hand sanitizer is because it's 70% alcohol and obviously it's less toxic than artist alcohol. So I thought I'd give it a go. And it seems to have worked really well so far, so I think I'll carry on using hand sanitizer. And it needs to be the liquid, not the gel. So I've put a description below of a brand that I use, and it seems to have worked really well so far. So as a beginner, it's really important that you bear in mind the organisation before you start doing your picture. So the first thing you need to do is have a look at all your colours, get out all the colours you think will be useful, and bear in mind that you will need a highlight, a mid-tone and a dark tone or what we call values and get those all arranged and then I would test them on a piece of paper ideally a good colour or base that is as similar as possible to the colour you're going to be using if you're working on white then obviously get white paper but because I'm working on a dark colour paper I had some spare black construction paper or sugar paper so I tried my colours out on that and I practice layering as well so that I'm ready for my final picture. So I'm going to start by drawing the stem of the flower and I'm going to use two Derwent pastel pencils. One is the chocolate, which is 66, and one is Crimson Lake, which is 20. So I'm going to start by layering the chocolate pencil and then I will go over the top with the Crimson Lake. Unfortunately, the camera cut off most of the top petal, so I didn't see the point in including this. However, I layered this same shade of bright blue with white, and then I used the alcohol or the hand sanitizer and used a small paintbrush to layer this. When I said that I used white, I've used this um, Faber-Castell pastel pencil, and I, the reason I've used that is because it's easier for going around the edge of these stamen. And I also used Prussian blue. Again, it's because it's easier to get into those detailed areas. I could use a soft pastel, but I just think it's easier and safer to go around with a pastel pencil. So if you don't have pastel pencils, that's fine. I just find it's easier to use a pastel pencil. You could, of course, also sharpen a soft pastel with a knife, with a craft knife, but I just think it's easier if you can get a soft pastel pencil to get that. And you'll see now that I'm going on top with the alcohol, how easy that this sanitizer blends the soft pastel and just makes a, a much more smooth effect with the soft pastel. Obviously some people don't like this effect but I just think it makes the um, effect more soft and smoother and you can of course use your finger as well but I just think this is an easier way to do it if you've got that option available and it also means that say for example you've got a detailed area like the edge of a uh, petal then you can do that. It may be fairly obvious but this uh, the technique that I'm using <clears throat> as well as when I have 
I painted other images in the past of flowers including with watercolor technique and acrylic is it's much better to start by painting each petal individually and look for those tonal values when you are painting and also make sure that you are painting petal by petal it's really important that you do that because then that gives each area time to dry and you may see that some of these petals I won't even use the alcohol most of them I will but some of them I won't one petal that sits directly underneath another it's really important that you look at where those tones and values are to achieve a 3d effect so I've added those tones with my soft pastel and I'm now going over that with the alcohol to smooth those tones out if necessary I will look at it later and add more tones but at the moment I just need to wait for that to dry These shades or tones may appear quite blocky at the moment, but when you are doing a painting or a drawing, you should always start big and then finish small. So that means you do your background and your larger areas first and then add your details last. So I'm obviously starting with the petals, the blue shades and the blue colors, and then I'll be finishing with the central area of the flower, those small details.
as I move around the flower I'm finding that the petals are getting darker especially the ones on the lower half so I'm adding the darker areas with the ivory black pastel pencil because I need those really dark tones especially as we move towards the center of the flower and with the center of the flower I need to have control over the pastel so because of that I'm using the pastel pencil and there are some there's a very dark purple color that I'm using because that's the kind of darkish blue that I need and it's more about tones rather than colors and I want to get that 3d effect so that's why I'm using that dark purple color but it's really important that you look at your reference image to get those values because if you don't look at the reference image you won't achieve that 3D effect if you're not paying attention to those values and the dark areas, the mid-tones and the, the light tones or highlights because as I say I'm working on mine petal by petal and I'm constantly going back and changing and checking and making amendments and that's the only way that you will achieve that 3D effect. So now I'm going to add petals to the top of the flower and because I don't want to smudge any of the pastel work that I've done along the bottom edge I'm adding some tracing paper and just putting that on top to protect those petals and the bottom half. I'm also going to be using the white pastel pencil to go around the stamen in the centre because obviously that's quite detailed and if I use a soft pastel stick that's going to be quite tricky to get around those areas. Then what I will do is smooth out those rest of the areas with the hand sanitizer and I will blend that out with a paintbrush.
area around the stamen is very very detailed I've decided to use a nail brush now I could use a size zero but the nail brushes are so detailed they're really really useful for very very small detailed areas like this So now I'm just checking over the flower petals, making sure that there aren't any highlights or dark tones I've missed out. It's really important that you do this because if you don't, then it won't have that overall 3D effect. And sometimes we miss little tiny dark tones and that can sometimes give away that 3D effect. So just go over and check the flower against your reference image just to make sure that you've got all the subtle tones and dark tones and highlights that will achieve that overall 3D effect. So I'm now going to block in the darker tones in between all the small stamen in the center of the flower. And I'm going to start layering up some colors because there's going to be quite a few colors, browns, greens, and dark grays to make sure that this mixture is Right, so I'm going to layer those up before I start adding the alcohol to blend that together.
Now that I'm adding precise details, I'm going to again use the nail brush. And when it, I come to adding more precise details later, I will be using a Prismacolor colour pencil and also the pastel pencil to add highlights. So now you've learnt new skills, hopefully you will feel confident to try doing your own drawing, either of this flower or another flower. If you want to see this clip in more depth, then please feel free to visit my Patreon, where I have a full length clip of this in real time. If you want to take your work to the next level, then why not join me on Patreon? You will have access to a wide variety of exclusive content, including real time tutorials, exclusive Patreon content and also one-to-one -one feedback on your work. So why not become a patron to start the next step in your journey to drawing success? Mm -hmm.